Hello YouTube and welcome to Full Dottle, a channel dedicated to tamping topics such as pipes, tobacco, lore, and more. I am your host, the Bearded Briarman, and without further ado, let's get lit. Welcome back everyone, and on this episode of Full Dottle, I'm going to be going over lighting your pipe. I had an email sent to me from a subscriber, Johnny in Pennsylvania, asking me if I could do a quick video on how to light your pipe, so that's what this is. I'm going to be smoking the 7LE316KS, this is the Miele, which is uh, Italian for honey. It is a pot shape. One of my favorite pipes, smooth finish, and in it, I've got Cornell and Dill's Winchester. Anybody out there that's like me that doesn't really want the flavored aromatics, Winchester is the closest uh, that I've had so far to an aromatic that is not flavored. It has got a wonderful aroma, wonderful flavor to the tobacco, but it is not an actual true aromatic. Wonderful tobacco. Anyway, Johnny, this video is for you. In the email, Johnny asked me if I would go over the lighting procedure with paper matches. However, the entire lighting process is going to be the same no matter what your, the utensil, the tool that you use to light your pipe. I've went through several different types. I've, I used to use wooden matches, and then I went to a pipe, an actual pipe lighter, and now I just use a common Bic. No matter what you choose to use, the style of lighting is going to be the same. It's just going to be a different utensil that you're using. But for the purposes of this video, because you specifically asked about paper uh, uh, matches, that's exactly what I'm going to use. So there's really just two steps to lighting your pipe after you get it loaded. And I'll go ahead and I'll, in the uh, end credits, I will leave a link to a video on how to pack your pipe. But once you've gotten your, your pipe packed, there's really only two steps. There's the charring light and then the true light. A charring light, the reason that you do a charring light first is because tobacco holds moisture. After you've packed your pipe, when you go to light it, it's going to bubble up and spread out and poof out when it does this, it's because the moisture that's inside of the tobacco is starting to evaporate and expand and come out. So the reason you want a charring light is because it helps to equalize the moisture that's on in your bowl here, and it helps you to tamp it down and create an even uh, lighting surface. The charring light is nothing more than to char, maybe start a light ember, but it's really not, the point of it is not necessarily to light the pipe. It's just to apply the flame so that you can equalize the moisture inside of the bowl, let it do its dance for you, tamp it down, and then follow through with a true light. So this is what it's going to look like in real time. Test, a couple of test draws to make sure that you've got your pack right. Perfect. You're going to go in a circular motion around your bowl. You want to make sure that the flame touches all of the tobacco while you're gently drawing on the stem. Go ahead and pull that flame down into the bowl to let it kiss all of the tobacco. Once you've done that, you should have a nice charred surface. Almost all of the tobacco there has been touched by the flame. There's a light ember started, you can see, because it's smoking, but it's not truly lit. If I start to puff on this, it will go out eventually. This is the point when you tamp it down. Tamping it down just helps you to create an even lighting surface. All of that moisture has been evacuated from the tobacco. It's expanded. It's done its little dance. And for the most part, it should stay still now when you do your true light. 
So the charring light is just to get that, that moisture out. It's to equalize the moisture in the tobacco in your bowl and allow you to have an even lighting surface. You can see all the tobacco has been charred. Moisture is equalized. Now we'll go ahead and light it. One more try. There we go. And that's that, Johnny. While you're lighting it for the true light, make sure that you're going around just like you did for the charring light, kind of like you're stirring a pot. All you're doing is you're getting it evenly lit all the way around the surface. Once you're done with the light, you're puffing on it. It's getting nice and hot. You can see the ember being created. Then slowly draw on your pipe and tamp it down. Using light pressure to establish that ember and allow the ember to make contact with the unlit tobacco that's resting underneath it. There's another video I'll link to on how, I, actually it might be in the packing the um, pipe video, but when you're tamping, make sure that you're using light pressure. The tamp should be doing all of the work for you. And I like to go at an angle around the bowl like this because I want it just a little mounded. If you don't leave a little mound in the center where the mound on the top is higher in the center, what may happen is that you'll find that your, your bowl will burn down quicker in the middle and leave the sides unlit. So I like to go at an angle when I tamp around the bowl. To ensure that I get an even burn all the way down. And that's that, Johnny. Just a little advice for you. If you have to relight, don't worry about it. Let it go completely out. Let it rest for just a minute. Take your time. Give it a light tamp before you try to relight and then light again. Anybody who tells you that you'll ne you should never have to relight a pipe, I'm going to tell you right now from me, my opinion, my honest opinion, don't believe them. Don't listen to them. That's hogwash. Sometimes you got to relight your pipe. I do it all the time. I've been smoking a pipe for quite some time now. And everybody I know that smoked a pipe for quite some time, they have relights. The only tobacco that I ever smoke that I do not have to relight is Five Brothers. This I would consider a codger blend, Five Brothers tobacco. It's a straight burly and it is very, very dry. And it's also a shag cut, which means it's very, very, very thin ribbons. And this holds a, an ember like you wouldn't believe. It burns very quick, and it is a very stout tobacco. I love it for traveling. It goes easy into my pipe bag. But that's the only tobacco I smoke that I don't have to relight, and it's simply because it's like trying, trying to smoke, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's just very dry, so it, it, there's not a lot of moisture. It's not going to go out. But most of the time, you're going to have relights. It's no big deal. So, Johnny, there's that video for you. Everybody else, it's been a long time since I've been on here. Three or four months, I believe. I'm still in the middle of a court battle, so I'm trying to keep a low profile until that's all said and done. Um, some good news, though. Uh, I did uh, prepare, or uh, prepare, I, I, I did prepare to propose to April, and I did so probably about a month ago. And to my delight, she said yes. So we are slated to get married June 11th uh, and uh, finally build uh, our life together. So there's a lot of things happening. I also just completed training under a master sharpener to become a certified uh, beauty shear sharpener. Uh, April, if you don't know, is a cosmetologist and so she, her beauty shears have to be sharpened, and when we started talking about it one day, she told me what she pays to have them sharpened, and it blew me away. 
So I decided to go ahead and take that upon myself and now I'll do her sharpening and, and all of that stuff. So I trained under a master sharpener uh, to be able to learn how to sharpen and it's a, it's a fun hobby kind of, um, what would you call that, a side gig hobby type thing. So I'm enjoying that. Got a whole workbench set up and now going on. And basically just laying low. So planning a wedding, trying to get through with this court stuff, keeping a low profile until that is through. And then I'll be back on here to continue uh, with the Full Dottle channel. Uh, I haven't forgot about all the things I need to do. Smoking, uh, Ronnie, I've got uh, your tobaccos to review. Don't worry, I haven't forgot about you. I just want to keep a low profile until all this uh, court case blows over. It's a custody dispute. So for those of you that uh, I've, I've left it kind of vague, and at first that was intentional, but it's a court, it's a custody type dispute. So I'm not in any trouble or anything like that, uh, but I'm trying to keep a low profile. So, all right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Full Dottle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And until the next time we see each other, I bid you farewell and happy piping. Bye, everyone. Hey, don't forget to enlist in the Full Dottle Platoon. It's easy. Just hit the subscribe button. Also, click the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload the next episode.